ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that I'm grateful to my home country, Hungary, since I'm suffering, uh, suffering from permanently low blood pressure, and I don't need a doctor. I just need politics of my country, which I'm observing, and this is kind of alternative medicine for me. Well, our Polish colleague, Professor Karolewski, has almost fully exhausted my topic. Between Hungary and Poland, there is a, a historically substantiated line. Cigrad uh, was initiated in 1991, hence a continuation of the Polish-Czech-Hungarian meeting of uh, kings, in, kings in the 16th century. And in both uh, language, uh, languages, so there is a verse, a rhyme, which means the Poles and the Hungarians are two brothers, both when they are uh, fighting with the sword, but also when they are drinking together. Uh, well, this uh, Fischergrad meeting our Polish friend was talking about uh, is rooted in this strong tradition. Uh, which cannot only be explained by the fact uh, that we n almost never had common borders, so this uh, friendship can also be explained by this reason, but we had common uh, kings and yagaros, the different dynasties, and let me say, uh, that went very deep in Hungary, so deep that despite the fact that Hungary in the Second World War acted as an ally to Hitler Germany, uh, uh, and Poland was in the other camp, when the Wehrmacht uh, invaded uh, Hungary, the Hungarian government even had to grant asylum to the Polish uh, refugees. Uh, they uh, fled to Hungary in 1939-40, and there was this kind of tradition. Today's uh, meeting under the name Visegrad has a slightly different character. Because what Professor Karolewski says is true, namely that it's rather about a short tactical meeting. There are certain issues on which Poland, Hungary, the Czech Republic and Slovakia go together, but sometimes I think that even the Polish National Conservative government with deliberate uh, similarity with the Orban system is something different nevertheless for the following reasons. Poland is a successful country. After 1990, uh, the economic success, especially after uh, decades, was an unbelievable performance, uh, and uh, the Polish society suffered a bit more than other Eastern Bloc states. Second, uh, Poland has always been a little bit more complicated than you would assume. There is always an opposition. After the division, Poland never had a lot of monarchist-type nostalgies. Nostalgia, so they are still crying for the Stefan's crown. Uh, well, there have always been relations according to which we can talk of a funny anarchy in Poland, uh, which is not the case in Hungary. Uh, there have always been major pathetic revolutions and we have been proud of them. But then we lost interest in them. In economic terms, Hungary is not so successful like the Czech Republic of Poland. And of course we had worse preconditions. On the other hand, the Hungarian polity is um, a bit more narrow-minded and more stupid, so to say. Our minister president, Viktor Orban, who is a very talented politician and a great tactician, sometimes makes political jobs. I think 
In domestic political terms, uh, he tries to make uh, the country stronger than it actually is to the benefit of the citizens. And then uh, there are things uh, uh, by which uh, everyone is flabbergasted because it goes our own, the grain of our own position. Because in 1956, we were the country which was admired by Europe and the, wo the world. And we sent 200,000 refugees to the West. And we were the country which in August 1989 uh, let the uh, former GDR citizens pass the Iron Curtain. Of course, uh, this may be purposeful in uh, domestic political terms, but it also disturbs uh, the Hungarian awareness, just like other things. The, well, the, the Fidesz in 2010 had better opportunities than the present government. Maybe they want to continue on Orban's uh, uh, footsteps, uh, which surprises me. Uh, all of a sudden seeing Orban as a model, but I think this won't happen like that in the Polish society, although the Orban government uh, made the attack on the media and the Constitutional Court was thus almost destroyed. Uh, but in the long run, I think this cannot become successful. Maybe we can come back to these questions in our discussion. I get my optimism, like many in Eastern Europe, from pessimism, so to say. I do assume that on the, on the one hand, when in Hungary the society accepts something like that, it will take a while before they understand that this is not acceptable. Coquetting with Russia, that is also kind of surprising. Well, given Putin's appetite, raveness appetite, this uh, uh, coquetting about the joint construction of a nuclear power plant, uh, that's a bad joke. And uh, this uh, hatred which is stirred up against the EU for which Urban is personally responsible is not real either. He doesn't reject each and everything. For example, EU money, he would never reject, which I can, can understand very well, because without this uh, money, Hungary couldn't function. And despite all friendship with Poland, with the Czech Republic, less friendship with the Slovaks, uh, we have some unresolved problems in that regard. But in the light of all these problems and concerns, I'm of the opinion that a return to the Warsaw Treaty is not feasible and not possible. Thank you.